Hello students, in this video we'll examine triple integrals and how to change limits, change the order of integration for triple integrals. So let's consider the triple integral over a region S and let's just have some arbitrary function here f of xyz dv where S is the region in the first octant below the plane two x plus four y plus eight z equals one. Let's find, write, this integral as an iterated integral. Okay, so we're gonna do this several, we'll do this at least two ways. There's six ways to do this actually. But let's plot this region and see what it looks like. So here's my z-axis, here's my y-axis, and then here's my x-axis, and then I have this plane, 2x plus 4y plus 8z is equal to one. Maybe to make our life a little bit easier, let's turn that into a 16, right? Because that makes things a lot more easily evenly divisible. Well, clearly, if y and z are equal to zero, then x is equal to eight. So here's the point x equals eight. So that's point, the point eight, zero, zero is on this plane. The point when I let x and z be equal to zero, that says that four y is equal to 16, or y is equal to four, so y is equal to four, is right over here. So the point zero, four, zero is also on the plane. And finally, the point when z is equal to two, z is equal to two, that's the point on the plane. So what we have over here is we have that line segment, that line segment, and that line segment. And so our plane looks like this. So the plane is tilted down this way. And of course, our, re our volume of integration is this inside of this simplex over here. So that's what our planar region looks like. It looks like this slice, this triangular slice, or this prism, okay? And so what I wanna do is, let's try to write this integral in the following way. Let's try to write the triple integral over S of F of X, Y, Z, dV, as the integral, the triple integral, over S of F of X, Y, Z, with respect to one particular order of integration. Let's do a DZ, DY, DX. That's as one example, okay? So I need to figure out where x goes in this region. So I need to find out the xy region of integration. So let's do that, the xy region of integration, and see what we get, okay? So where are xy residing in this region? Well, x and y, if I just were to draw them, here's x and here's y. Well, we have the, over here the point four for y and the point over here eight for x. And so this is my, the part of the xy plane under over which our region resides. And so what's happening over here, how would I write down this region? Well, what would I say? I'd say that x goes between zero and eight in this region. X goes between zero and eight. What does y go between? Y goes between zero and the equation of this line over here. Now the question is, is how do we find the equation of this line? Well, this line, so y is gonna go between zero and then the equation of this line. Well, I have the y-intercept, the y-intercept is four, and I have the slope, so the rise is four over the run is negative eight. So I have four over negative eight or negative one half. So this line over here is four minus x over two. We can check this. If x is equal to zero, I get to four. If x is equal to eight, I get to four minus eight over two. Four minus eight over two is zero, and that gives us this point over here. So that's my y region of integration. That's my xy region of integration. Now, where is z going from? Well, z in this region goes from zero on this plane over here, on the xy plane, up to the equation that plane. Well, what's the equation that plane? That equation that plane is eight z is equal to 16 minus what? Minus four y minus two x, or it's saying that z is equal to two minus y over two minus x over four. So now I can write this in what way? I can write this as the integral, z goes from zero to two minus y over two minus x over four. The integral, y goes from zero up to what? Oops, I have this in the wrong direction, so let's do the x integral. We have to do the constants first, so let's do that constant first. We did the order wrong. So let's think about this. So where does x go from? x is the very, very first integral we see. So x goes between zero and eight, between zero and eight for 
0 and 8 for x, not 0 and infinity, but 0 and 8 for x. So let's do that. So we have x goes between 0 and 8. Then what does y go between? y goes between 0 and 4 minus x over 2. And then z goes between 0 and 2 minus y over 2 minus x over 4. f of x, y, z, dz, dy, dx. Let's try one other order of, let's try a different order of integration. Let's try the dx, dy, dz. Now we focus in on the yz plane first, and so what does the yz plane look like? The yz plane looks like this. There's y and there's z. So y is at 4 and z is at 2, and that's our region. So what's z going between? z goes between 0 and 2 in this region. And what does y go between? y goes between 0 over here and the equation of this line. Well, what's the equation of that line? The equation of that line is going to be what? It's going to be z is equal to 2, and the slope again is 1 half, minus y over 2. Let's check. So when I plug in y equals 0, I get to z equals 2. When I plug in y equals 4, I get to z equals 0. That's the equation for what? That's the equation for z. I want the equation for y. So if I do a z minus 2, is equal to negative y over 2, multiplied by negative 2, this is going to turn into a what? That negative 2 is going to turn into a 4 minus 2z is equal to y. So that says that y goes between 0 and 4 minus 2z. So this integral, this triple integral, is also equal to what? z goes between 0 and 2, y goes between 0 and 4 minus 2 z. And then where does x go between? Well, x is going to go between what? It starts in the yz plane. That's when x is equal to 0 and goes up to this plane. Well, what's the equation for x on this plane? I would solve this equation for x, right? This would say that 2x is equal to 16 minus 4y minus 8z. Divide by 2 to find out what x is. So x over here is going to be 8 and then minus 2y, and then minus 4z, f of x, y, z, whatever that function happens to be. Then what did I do first? I did a dx first, because my x limits depend on y and z. Then I do a y. My y depends only on z. And then finally, I do a z. Now, as an exercise, using the same exact method, there are four other orders of integration to do. You can do dz, dx, dy. You can do dx, dz, dy. Then you can do dy, dx, dz, or you can do dy, dz, dx. So there's six total possible regions of integration. In particular, when you're integrating over a simplex like this one, it's relatively straightforward because all of the boundaries are linear functions of the other variables. So it's very easy to solve for one in terms of the other. If, however, there are more complex functions like quadratic functions or circular functions, then you have to resort to more complex algebraic manipulations to find the boundary limits. Thank you very much.